Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I like to give ideas and suggestions on how to get organized, declutter. I love doing DIYs, crafts, and upcycles. So be sure to click the subscribe button if those are things you're interested in. So today I want to share some more of tips and suggestions I give to my clients most often. It's funny because I always think that these are things everyone knows, and yet every time I share something, I always hear, I didn't know that. So let's get into some of my favorites. One of my first ones is using a roll of masking tape or painter's tape. So if when you reach for your roll, this is what you end up doing every time. Here's a quick time-saving hack. When you are done rolling it, make a 45 degree fold and then the edge of the tape will rip a perfect straight line every time. Let me show you one more quick time. So do a quick 45 degree fold and it's single-handed and just rip off the edge and the tab will make it easy to pull off every time. The next thing I love doing, if you've ever tried screwing something in and you always drop the screw, it's really frustrating, especially if you're up on a ladder. Get E6000 and a small magnet and attach it to the end of your screwdriver. What this does is magnetizes, and I'm using a large magnet here just so you can easily see it, but it magnetizes your screwdriver so you won't ever drop a screw again. I love using command strips. They are my favorite hack for doing a multitude of things. But the Velcro ones are also some of my favorites. So here's something that I've done with those. Have small remotes that always get lost? Use your Velcro command strips and attach them to a convenient place. So I love using these. Once they're pressed together, it's like a quarter of an inch thick, so you won't see it. They're not bulky. So attach one side of the Velcro command strip, making sure the battery compartment is always available. And then you can go ahead and attach this to the air conditioner, your fan. You can attach it underneath the shelf, an end table, a coffee table, and you'll never have to waste any time looking for the remote again. Along the same line, if you have a carpet that's always getting dog-eared and a tripping hazard, Attach it to the floor, it won't damage it, and attach the other side to the corner of your carpet. This makes sweeping underneath still super easy, but nobody's gonna trip over that corner anymore. This one's gross and I apologize. I have long hair, both of my kids have long hair, so this is only one week's worth of hair. <laughs> so if this grosses you out, just fast forward. But here's what I do. I get out my seam ripper from my sewing kit, and it makes quick work of breaking up that hair so that I can pull it off of the roller. It also, because it has that nice sharp point, I'm able to get out all the small things that have gotten trapped in this. This makes it so much easier to clean. Before I was trying to use letter openers or screwdrivers or scissors, and it always was much more time consuming. So get a seam ripper, makes quick work of cleaning your vacuum. This one's for all you crafters out there. I love putting glitter on things, but I hate how the fine glitter especially gets on everything. So I love my little shoe box with my salt and pepper shakers. That has worked very well for me. So right now I'm just pouring some out so you can see what I do. I get my lint roller and I got this from the Dollar Tree and you can just roll it across the surface and it easily picks up every little speck of glitter. Ta-da! I'd especially like to know if this one is just me, but I am always struggling with putting in the plug for either my phone charger or plugging in the USBs into my computer. It's frustrating and my eyesight is starting to go, I swear. So if this happens to you, here's a quick tip for that. Get a small paint marker, a little bit of nail polish. In this case, I used some chalk wax and make a mark on where it's correctly plugged in. And this way you always have a visual lineup and you don't have to mess with which side goes in. There it is. I always know which way to plug it in now. If you have these types of bookcases, you know they are not the strongest shelves and eventually with a little bit of weight, they start to bow. So here's what I do with that. About every six to eight weeks, 
I just flip over the shelf. This ensures that it doesn't ever over bow and it always keeps it nice and flat. A super easy fix. This last tip I have, I just learned about not too long ago and I was, it was one of those aha moments for me. I like reusing jars from candles, except digging out and cleaning the wax is sometimes problematic. So stick your candle when you're done with it in the freezer for about an hour or two. When you pull it out, it'll be nice and frosty, which is great on a hot day. Gently press the bottom with a knife, not a sharp knife. The wax will crackle and it easily pours right out. Then you can just take a napkin and wipe out the residue and you have an easily cleaned jar that's ready to reuse for another project. So that's it for the tips and hacks I have right now. I want to talk about what I went through this week. So as I was finishing uploading my video Monday night, I was, I don't know why I've been having problems with my camera lately, but my footage is going in and out. The volume is going in and out, which I'm trying to rectify right now. So it was about 11 o'clock and I was desperately trying to get it posted so that you could watch it Tuesday morning when all of a sudden my little doggy Domino comes running in acting crazy. He got sprayed with a skunk. <laughs> so that wasn't fun. The poor little boy. We're trying to figure out things to do for him quickly and for us. It's an overwhelming smell if you have not experienced it firsthand before. I discovered tomato juice does not work does not work. Um, but we did discover that a solution of vinegar, baking soda with a little bit of Dawn dish soap, which thankfully we had some on hand because when we tried to buy more, there wasn't any to be found, and a mixture with peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. Once we adjusted our mixtures, it was like being a mad chemist so that it didn't mount Vesuvius on us every single time. It really is just adding a little bit of these each time until you can make a solution that doesn't explode. But this was the best remedy for neutralizing the smell, at least mostly. I'd say it took down the smell by about 50%. We did it again the next day, which helped neutralize things, but we still have some that is lingering. That lingering thing happens to be in all of the clothing we had around at the time, including our couch cover, our bedding. So I thought, no problem, I'll just do a bunch of laundry with the hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, baking soda, and a little bit of Dawn dish soap. And I got through the first load, put it in the dryer, and our dryer broke. <laughs> ah, I swear, some of the things that happen are just the comedic timing of things. So we're getting a new dryer. Um, I, yeah, we're going to be getting a new dryer. But until then, the skunk smelled piles of laundry are just sitting out here in the garage. So it's a lovely aromatic thing. <laughs> so those are my funny stories this week. My poor little puppy doesn't understand why he's gotten three baths in one week when he usually only gets one about every other month. But he's going to be okay. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about really quick is Happy Mother's Day. Mothers are the most underrated people in the world. I saw a video not too long ago where this guy went through this whole thing of interviewing candidates, asking if they would be okay working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 12 months a year without any vacation. And you could just see the reactions on these people's faces like, no, why would I ever do that? And then he said something silly like, well, what if the people that you were working for were completely unappreciative and they just always had expectations of you being there to do things? And of course, again, the reaction was absolutely not. And then he finished it off with saying, well, how about if this job was just volunteer, you don't actually get paid? And some people at this point, you know, actually ended the video conference interview with him or got up and walked away. And with each one, you'd go, wait, wait, wait. What if I told you there are people that do this every day? And a couple of them came back going, there's no way. And then he said, well, how about if I told you they were mothers? And then you see the acknowledgement wash over their faces. I'll put a link to that video below, but mothers really are underappreciated. And the other thing I want to say with that really quick is it doesn't take birthing to be a mom. How many of us out there have been stepmoms, foster moms? for baby moms. So anytime you're caring and nurturing for something, that makes you a mom. And I just want to say, 
Happy Mother's Day. That really is all I have today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Please make sure you leave me a comment, hit like, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I will see you in two days. Bye.